was the most impossible thing that you have done in your life? Maybe getting straight A's in that semester was quite impossible, or getting insight into that delicious dish that you have been trying to make, or getting enough courage to do that bungee jumping last year. Well, for me. 14 years ago, just going outside was impossible. Hi, I'm Win. The story that I'm about to tell you today is not the story of my success. In fact, it is the story of my struggle to overcome the limits of the possibility. But first, I need to give you a little bit of my background. 27 years ago. I was born with not so rare but currently untreatable eye disease called glaucoma. I still had some vision, though. But when you were a child, you were not worried about that very much. Due to my poor vision, I was an inactive child. To be fair, I tried playing chess and run with my friends once, and I bumped into the pole quite spectacularly. So. Physical activities may not be my thing after all. Then I started to concentrate more on the passive activities such as reading, drawing, and thinking. The more I thought about the world, the more universes intrigued me. Science, especially physics, became my interest. And when my mother bought a computer for her own work, that was when I found my passion. I don't know why the scrolling lines of unintelligible text fascinated me back then, but life is full of strange things, isn't it? At first, I had to secretly use my mother's computer, but when she found out, she actually supported me by letting me buy a lot of books. So I learned everything, ranging from 3D animation to computer networking to visual basic programming. Right at the age of nine. From that moment on, I decided that I want to be a scientist. Those were the happy moments in my childhood, but my life was far from easy. I attended primary school at the age around nine. However, I couldn't see well enough to read or far enough to discern even a large letter on a blackboard. So I had to carry a little microscope and a binocular with me the entire time. Still, it wasn't too bad, and I wished that it would go on forever. But the world was not so kind to me. On one fateful day, I had to undergo an eye operation to remove membrane from the retina of my eyes. At that time, my life was still full of wonders and excitement. There were books that I hadn't finished reading. My programming hadn't gone that far. There was final exam coming up in the next two weeks, and just a week before the operation, I found out about this program called RPG Maker that lets you build your own games. And I thought, yeah, after my recovery, I'm going to create my own game with these amazing spells and story about the futuristic world and so on. Little did I know that those things will never come to pass, at least in my familiar form. Undergoing eye surgery was a frequent thing to me. Normally, after spending a few days in the hospital, I would return home, wait for a few more days, and take off my eye patch, and everything would be all right. But this time, that time was different. After taking off my eye patch, I could see for exactly. One day, and after that, it all went dark. Just that, suddenly, my life was turned upside down. Back in those days, no one really knew much about blind people, so the only thing that I could do is to lie on the bed. I couldn't go outside. I couldn't read. I couldn't use my computer. I couldn't do all the things that I love. And you see, talking about blind people being scientists at that time was ridiculous. So it seemed 
I cannot follow my dream anymore. It almost felt like my life just ended. I began to accuse myself. Did I do the thing incorrectly? Did I not follow the doctor's order? Why this had to happen to me? My mental state started to deteriorate. It was pretty hopeless, but I still kept a little piece of hope inside me. Until one day, when something caught my ears. Two new casters on the radio were talking about their experiences of chatting with blind people who use computer to operate, who use screen reader to operate their computers. And that 30 seconds of conversation opened a world of possibility to me, and I began to think: what I thought was impossible may not be that impossible after all. I contacted Thailand Association for the Blind, and. A few more days after that, I was on the internet, back to doing the thing I love. Those few days have changed my perspective forever. And I think, is the notion of impossibility just an illusion, a barrier we put up when we are afraid to do something? And if one such barrier can fall down, then why can't the next? So I was on the path of proving it. I attended the school and tried to do all the things that I want to do again. Yes, it was not easy, and there were many obstacles. But I always think that it was just another barrier that I have to jump through. For example, I realized that all the signs and computer books in our country is in printed format, and I can only read electronic books, which. Comes from foreign country, so it dawned on me that if I want to read a book, I must understand English. With newfound determination, I started learning English from scratch, from listening to speaking to reading, step by step. I began to understand it more and more. How far have I gone? Well, the effort took me from the person. Who didn't understand the difference between E, M, and R, the very basic word, to the person who is now giving a speech entirely in English to all of you today? I moved on to secondary education and solidified my goal. I decided to pursue a degree in computer engineering, thinking that with the knowledge of computer, I might perhaps go on to study computational physics, and. Help make some innovation that makes the world better. Back in those days, blind people studying science were rare, and blind people in engineering were unprecedented. I have to prove myself that I could do it. With a lot of efforts, while screen imports picture, the video clips from YouTube, electronic books, my family, a lot of volunteers helping me read a book. I graduated high school with a GPA of 3.98, the first rank of my class. However, admission exam still presented its own problems, though. Due to the educational policy of our country, I cannot be given any compensation due to my disability. No extra time, no exempt question, no simplified interpretation. I almost gave up at that point. Just trying to understand one electrical circuit by hand takes minutes. It's nearly impossible to finish the test on time, let alone getting enough score for the leading university. But I wouldn't stop. I pictured myself in the future, doing all the things that I want to do, inventing new algorithm, helping others solving problems. Being part of a team that make a breakthrough discovery, and I asked myself, "Do you want to be there?" A part inside me replied, "Yes." And I walked forward. I sat down, re-strategizing my plan, inventing my own techniques, cutting down on a problem that takes too long. And now I'm here, studying computer engineering. 
currently doing thesis on finding ways to increase the speed of physics simulation, in hope that it will help unlock the mystery of the universe. As a fan of science fiction, I once came across a quote from a famous author, Arthur C. Clarke, which sums up my belief nicely. It said, "The only way of discovering the limits of the possible is to venture a little way past them into the impossible." Taking this quote dearly to my heart, I am not afraid of the impossible anymore. When I did a chemistry experiment and I couldn't see when the solution changes its color, I built myself a device that converted the changing of color into sound that I could hear. When I want to record what's happening around me, I took to photographing and found out that aiming cameras using sound alone works pretty well. And if you are still wondering about that amazing game that I want to build 14 years ago. Yeah, I'm still doing that too, albeit in a different form called audio games, a game that the blind and sighted can play alike. This is just my story, and there are millions more. Only my regret is that no one has ever told this to me, so I put myself on a lifelong mission to help others, to show that everyone has potential to do anything. Being blind doesn't have to mean that you cannot do things like others. When we encounter a problem, there are two ways of dealing with it. We can either stop and turn back, or find a way to walk around it. And I always choose to walk around. Yes, we might not be able to walk the same route as the others. We might require a little detour here. A little imagination there, or a little dosage of creativity is thrown into the mix. But eventually, we could be there. Being blind has some downside, but it has defined who I am today. I can read, I can write code, I can do research, I can help others, I can enjoy life as much as every one of you. So, why don't I enjoy it, right? There are many stunning things that I have yet to achieve, and many more wonderful things yet to be discovered. Up to this point, you may start to have something stirring up on your mind too. And if that is the case, will you embrace that thought and walk with me toward the end of possibility together? Because I am winnable, and you are too. Thank you.